being recorded. Awesome. Thank you for coming today. This is our second house hunting and hacking meetup. And today we are going to have Amber Zamudio. She is a insurance professional who's going to talk to you about insuring your real estate portfolio. And she's also available to answer any insurance questions. I've talked to a few insurance agents at different meetings, and that world is changing quite a bit, just as is the lending world and the real estate world. So we are excited to have Ember. Next week, Genevieve is going to talk about how to navigate the interest rate environment we're in and still create a win-win out of that. So that's very exciting. Quick recap, last week in our first annual, uh, we talked a little bit about how to build a real estate portfolio. And I used the example um, of my own journey of starting buying a single family home way back in 1995 and then really not doing anything until 2012. And at that point, I decided to embark on the real estate world and did my first rental property and just have gone on from there. I do recommend that you guys, if you have the chance, read the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. It is an excellent book and it was kind of a recap of some of the things that we talked about two weeks ago in our first meeting, the whole concept of how do you leverage assets to create income, to create passive income um, that can help you to build wealth long-term. So without further ado, uh, I am gonna turn it over to Amber Zamudio of Zamudio Insurance Services. Well, hi guys. I am so excited to be presenting with you today about the sexiest topic of real estate, which is insurance. Uh, I think we all know that's not the truth. I think John's got the sexy part, but you know, uh, I have the necessary <laughs> Um, I did want to share a little bit about my background with house hacking and hunting. Um, in 2006, my husband and I um, got married. We were living in Colorado Springs at the time, and he was a store manager for Bed Bath and Beyond. And we had transferred all over the state with Bed Bath and Beyond, and they said, "If you want to buy a, a house, now is the time because we will not transfer you." Well, uh, it was in 2007 when we actually ended up purchasing the purchasing the house, and in 2008 when the last market crashed, um, they transferred us. <laughs> And so he was driving from Colorado Springs to Parker, Colorado. So it was a very long journey every day. And um, it was horrible. We had a Jeep and it got 16 miles per gallon um, gas. So we quickly realized that we needed to get out of that house and into something else. Well, that was 2008. There was no selling a house at that point. We were upside down pretty much in the loan. We were, we would only be able to sell it for like, I don't know. I think they wanted to say like 75,000. <laughs> and so we thought, well, we cannot afford to drive. The gas was $4 and something a gallon at that time. We couldn't afford to drive back and forth. And so we put our Colorado Springs home up for rent and got a tenant and have been renting that property since. And it's been interesting. There have been some really awful tenants, um, but quickly got rid of those people and got new people in. Um, while I was in Colorado Springs, I worked in an eviction attorney's office. And so I had some background in that, worked out really great for me. Uh, served those 10 days notice of demands and got those terrible renters out, got some great renters in and the rest is history. Um, my husband and I rented for quite a while and then we moved to our, um, what we thought was our dream home in Wheat Ridge, Colorado. And um, with the inflation and just skyrocketing prices, being a small business owner, we decided we wanted to sell. So we sold that home um, and purchased our home that we're in now with cash, which was awesome. And we're looking to purchase additional properties in this small town where, like John had mentioned last um, meeting, it's on the rise. It's something that's, um, you know, it's up and coming area. There are a lot of new businesses coming, a lot of new opportunities, and we're hoping to jump on that sometime soon. Um, and when we do, we'll be consulting with Jen because she has turned me on to some ideas about, you know, um, 
bank statement financing and, and stuff like that. So we're excited to talk to her uh, about stuff like that. I, oh, Jen, can you enable screen sharing? I, um, like I said, I'm in Nebraska and um, a lot of changes have been happening in insurance, as John had mentioned earlier, along with the, you know, mortgage changes and all that stuff. There are a lot of carriers, especially in Colorado, who are pulling out, who've um, sold to other companies, other carriers. So like State Auto is now transitioning over to Safeco. Kemper pulled out of Colorado altogether. Nationwide has crazy underwriting guidelines right now. So there is a lot happening in insurance, but we are still finding solutions and we're um, super grateful about that. Um, so we just continue to press on and um, you know do what we can. <laughs> uh, are you guys able to see my screen here? Okay, perfect. Um, so today we'll be talking about ensuring your financial investments. Uh, this smaller here real quick. Um, and we're really excited that you guys joined us for our house hunting and hacking group. We're excited to meet with you guys the second and fourth Tuesdays at 7 p.m. And there's a lot of good information to be shared and we're excited to learn and grow with you guys and help you on your journey. Um, in today's discussion, we'll talk a bit about my agency, how I can help you, your home, your investments, and some other pro uh, policies that are really critical when you're thinking about um, your overall investment portfolio. Some money-saving tips, insurance reviews, the importance of them, and questions and answers. So like I said, I'm Amber Zamudio. I am an insurance specialist. I have owned this agency for four years, but I have been in insurance for over 10 with multiple different um, agencies. I've been both a captive agent, which means that I was only able to write with one carrier. That was all state to start. And then I also worked for Farmers Insurance, where my husband and I owned an agency. When you're working with a captive agent, you have one solution. And the difficult thing about that is when you see skyrocketing rates, your agent will call you and say, this is your rate increase. And then that's it. <laughs> Whereas now I'm an independent insurance agent and we offer a wide range of companies, policies and packages that are tailor-made to meet your specific needs. So whether you're looking to insure your home, auto, recreational vehicles, rental properties, uh, small business, or need life insurance, we have the policies that have you covered. We have a lot of different uh, policy combinations. So say, uh, you know, auto would be best with progressive, homeowners would be best with travelers. We can look at those different bundling opportunities for you and serve as one point of contact. In addition, when your rates increase or you have different underwriting circumstances, like number of tenants in a dwelling or something like that, we have the options to shop uh, the different policy packages for you and come up with good um, solutions that are, are perfect fit for you. Um, we, I love this quote by Henry Ford, the best we can do is size up the chances, calculate the risks involved, estimate our ability to deal with them, and then make our plans with confidence. Um, your biggest investments, obviously, your life, your family, the properties that you own is probably the biggest monetary investments that you have, but then your autos and your other personal assets. Your home typically is your most valuable asset, and there are basic coverages that fall into play when you're thinking of your home insurance. One of those coverages is your dwelling coverage, and the way we calculate your dwelling coverage is by going through the features of your property. So what type of foundation does it have? What type of structure is it? Is it frame? Is it brick? Uh, the type of roof that you have, all of those different things, like quality of your bathroom, quality of your kitchen, whether it's custom, whether it's, you know, builder's rate, all of those things come into play when we're calculating the replacement costs for your dwelling. So sometimes we get asked, why is our home insured for 400000 and I'm purchasing it for $1.7 This is a, This is a recent thing that actually came up for me. 
And um, the answer to that question is because you're purchasing your land as well. So we don't insure your land. If your home burns down, your land's still there. We're just replacing the home that's sitting on it. So you'll see um, a lot of times that your home is not insured to your loan value. And um, when you're going through your loan process, usually Jen will say, Amber, we need a copy of that replacement cost estimator. We'll go through that with our clients and we'll provide that to them, the mortgage company so that they have that information. Um, other structure coverage is an important one to include in your insurance policy. Um, we're looking at things like pools, sheds, gazebos. Um, these are structures that are not attached to the house. Um, oftentimes it'll be your fence, uh, things like that. Your personal property is what we consider, if you were to take the roof off of your house, shake it upside down, anything that comes out is usually considered your personal property. A lot of times when I'm talking to people, they think that they don't have much for personal property. A lot of times people will say, oh, I probably only have 15,000. Uh, that's just not the case because personal property is things like your furniture, your shoes, your clothing, your medications, your, your dog toys. I mean, all of those things add up very quickly. And you have a diff couple different ways to insure those things when you're talking about personal property. And usually we like to insure things at replacement costs the difference between purchasing new and purchasing used. Loss of use is on your policy, and that's something that's traditionally built in. Traditionally, it's 10 or 20 percent of your dwelling coverage. And loss of use comes into play when your home is um, uninhabitable due to a covered loss and you need to stay somewhere else. Those funds provide you the ability to stay somewhere else while your home's being repaired. There are a couple ways you can purchase loss of use. Some of those are for a monetary amount, and some of them are for time limits, um, like 12 months, 24 months, things like that. Then on your insurance, you've got things like personal liability. Personal liability is important coverage, uh, and I've seen a lot of claims come through with personal liability. It's actually the, the majority of claims that I see, aside from hail season this year. Um, but personal liability would be like, if you had a dog that was, of course, not on the restricted dog list, although Colorado just had a change with this, so um, pretend you didn't hear that there's a restricted dog list, that's not coming into play until, I think, 2024. So there are carriers who have excluded dog lists. Um, if you had, let's say, I have a Havanese, and let's say my Havanese were to bite a little child's face, and they needed cosmetic surgery. If my medical payment coverage, which usually is around, you know, $1,000 to $5,000, that's more of a quick fix type coverage. If that was not sufficient to cover that uh, liability that I have and now repairing that child's damaged face, the personal liability of the coverage would come in. Um, personal injury coverage is a separate coverage. And that would be where if you say went on to Google and said, I just ate at um, Jimmy's sugar shack and um, he spit my food and he was dirty and disgusting. <laughs> In cases like that, he can say, hey, they, they libeled me, they slandered me. Um, you know, they wrote a, a false review and they could actually say they're going to sue you. And a lot of times these small businesses do sue people for that. And so personal injury coverage would come into play to help mitigate those costs and, and things associated with that. There are a lot of other coverages that come into play when you're thinking of your home and your rental properties. And some of those are extended dwelling replacement costs. So that provides an additional amount of insurance over what that stated dwelling coverage is in order to make up for things like inflation. Um, when the Marshall fires took place um, just last year, what have you, um, there were a lot of folks who were underinsured. Well, that was also during a time when wood was skyrocketing, labor was skyrocketing. All of those expenses were much more than what insurance companies anticipated paying. So a lot of people fell short in the amount of replacement costs that they had for their dwelling. Extended dwelling replacement cost provides an additional, starting at usually 25%, all the way up to 100% of extended dwelling replacement costs. So if you had a home that's insured for 100,000 and you know they go to rebuild and say, hey, it takes 150,000. If you had 50% extended dwelling coverage, you're great. If you had 100% dwelling extended dwelling coverage or even better because a lot of times you know, things go over. 
Law and ordinance coverage is a critical coverage to keep in mind. That's coverage that extends towards uh, repairs and replacements of property where law and ordinance codes need to be met. So for instance, in 2017, when we had massive hailstorms in the Arvada Wheat Ridge kind of area, there were a lot of homes that were damaged that had old roof decks. And that's the under the wood that lays underneath the, the shingles. And so along with shingles being delivered and gutters and all those things, you probably saw a ton of people having wood delivered. And I'm like, what the heck are they getting? Are they, are they expanding the house? They were rebuilding their decks of their uh, roofs. That coverage is not automatically included. You do have to have that on an endorsement. And so having that coverage is pretty, pretty critical. Um, insurance companies offer service line coverage now. When I bought that house that I told you about in Colorado Springs in 2007, I was so excited. I was super young. I was on top of the world. I was like, yeah, I'm a homeowner. Well, two days after I moved into that house, my service line backed up and my basement was flooded with sewage, which was absolutely disgusting. <laughs> and I called my insurance agent and lo and behold, I didn't have water backup coverage and I didn't have service line coverage. Now, granted, this was a while ago when that wasn't as common of a coverage, but now there are coverages where you can have that service line repaired or replaced if it's a covered loss. One great thing about service line coverage is, unlike traditional insurance, it doesn't have to be a sudden and accidental loss. So typically, we see coverages extending for, like I said, sudden and accidental loss, hailstorms, fires. Um, things of that nature. Well, with a service line, traditionally we see a lot of frost heave, busting the lines. We see tree root invasion, rust, rot, all those types of things. Those are covered under the service line coverage. So it's an awesome coverage to have. It's very affordable. Um, you can get coverage usually from 10,000 all the way up to 20,000 for the service line. And it's really an essential coverage to have at a, an extremely low cost, which is awesome. I already mentioned personal injury liability. That goes for things like libel, slander, um, writing false reviews, things like that. Water backup coverage is not something that's traditionally a set in your standard homeowner's policy. Water backup is such a critical coverage because when you have tree roots going through your service line and all of a sudden you have water backing up into your house and sewage, uh, you know, a foot high and it's absolutely disgusting and ruining everything, you would have coverage for that water backing up. Otherwise, you're just kind of out of luck. Um, water backup and loss assessment are two very critical components when you're looking at condo insurance, especially, um, and especially loss assessments. Anytime you have an HOA that's laying over your home, there is a chance that you would be assessed an assessment. Um, now, there are two types of assessments. Um, they're both special assessments, but loss assessments are a little bit different. So loss assessment is a, a, an endorsement on a policy that provides coverage for direct losses. So if your condo was hit with a hailstorm and um, you know they carry a super high deductible, like let's say 2 million, because I just had a call yesterday with a $2 million deductible, what they do to uh, afford that deductible is they assess a fee to every one of their residents, um, every unit, in order to make up for that deductible. So if you have loss assessment on your policy, you would have the funds in order to do that. If you don't have loss assessment, which is an optional coverage, you could very well be needing to, to pay for that yourself. I've seen this on the news multiple times where people didn't have loss assessment coverage. The HOAs can't meet the deductible, and it's kind of a horrible situation for everyone involved. Another key home coverage is valuable items coverage. Uh, valuable items would be things like your wedding rings, <clears throat> art, uh, you know, oriental rugs, uh, firearms, things like that that are um, you know, not typically insured or insured to a very low amount. Generally, um, jewelry coverage or things like that is covered at like $1,000. So and if you have anything over that, you can schedule it on your insurance and it's a great opportunity to make sure you have coverage for those things. When it comes to your investment properties, most of those coverages are the same. However, there are some differences. 
like personal property. Of course, when you're renting a property and it's not a furnished property, like you know John mentioned last week or two weeks ago that he rents a, a furnished unit, there are a lot of times when you're renting out your, your rental property and you don't have personal property in there. You may have you know lawnmower, things like that. But a lot of times people aren't accounting for their personal property and what that actually is. So that actually includes your refrigerator, your stove, your microwave if it's not permanently installed, your washer dryer, all those types of things. Um, so those are important uh, considerations when you're thinking of insuring your investment properties, what your personal property actually is. Loss of rent is a little bit different than loss of use on your homeowner's policy because loss of rent is actually, as it says, the, the rental income that you'd be losing if a property is not um, able to be rented due to a covered loss. So it's important to calculate, you know, how much money are you anticipating collecting from your tenants and what money would you be lost? Would you not be able to pay off your, you know, pay your monthly mortgage payments? Because if something happens, you still pay for those things. So that's a way to supplement some of those, you know, um, tragic events, <laughs> essentially. On your investment properties, personal liability is now premises liability. So you would have your personal liability carry over from your renters or your homeowner's policy for things that you do personally, like if your dog bit somebody. But on investment property, it would be premises liability. So if somebody is leaning on a, a guardrail, there's a little guardrail thing there. Somebody's leaning on that guardrail, shatters into 100 pieces. And you, or I guess it's even have to shatter for it to be, you know, terrible, but somebody falls through the guardrail and breaks their back. You're now liable for their medical expenses and your medical payment coverage probably isn't going to cover it. If they fell down the stairs and maybe needed an ACE bandage and a, you know, a couple Tylenols or something, your med medical payment coverage would probably cover that. But otherwise, they're going to expect you to pay for those medical expenses. And that's where your premises liability would come into place. On investment properties, you'll typically only see extended dwelling coverage at 25%. It's very critical that when you have an investment property, you're including the personal injury coverage. And part of that is because when you have tenants, they could say, oh, oh John evicted me and it was wrongful eviction. Well, now you have personal injury coverage. And so if they were to accuse you of false entry, uh, malicious eviction, false eviction, things like that, along with libel, slander, you would have coverage for the legal expenses related to those types of things. Even if you're just accused and it's not actually a case where you were guilty of that. Um, water backup on investment properties is traditionally much lower. We usually see a cap on that of $5,000. Uh, $5, and then for your investment properties, a lot of times people will put these in trusts and LLCs. One awesome thing is most of these carriers do cover your liability with the trust and LLC, as long as the trust or LLC is set up in the name of where the managing member is the sole owner of the property. So if you were married and you and your spouse had an LLC together, we would offer coverage to the LLC through the liability portion of your um, insurance program. However, if you owned that property together with your spouse and then you got divorced, you're no longer a single family managing members of LLC. So then in that case, you have to get a commercial property uh, policy. Just some little nuances there. So as I was mentioning earlier, there are a lot of changes when it comes to the underwriting exposures. And so they're looking for a lot of things that weren't necessarily talked about before, but that's always good to keep in mind. Um, the first one is pride in ownership. A lot of these insurance companies now have satellite technology that will do a satellite view and they'll look at Google pictures and it automatically loads into their underwriting um, ways of underwriting. I don't it's, it's incredible how this stuff happens. I have no idea. <laughs> um, I'm definitely not the technology person in this, but I recently had a client whose grandmother had a, a huge rate increase with um, another insurance carrier, and she asked if we'd be able to write this insurance policy. Well, when I put the information in through Travelers, they noticed that there was trees covering more than 50% of the roof, 
But then they also noticed that the roof had two different types of material. Also, they saw that there was a broke down car and just a variety of things. And that to them shows that they don't have a pride in ownership. And so they actually declined that new business. So that is something that a lot of people are, are currently looking at nationwide will require you to send in pictures of your exterior of your home, all four sides, the roof, the address uh, label, the address sign. But in addition to that, they are requesting pictures of the interior of your home, including your dogs, <laughs> family members, um, just a whole slew of things. And when they see that a home is completely wrecked inside, they will decline. They, they will not, you can't even get a quote with Nationwide right now, unless you have pictures of all of those things. Um, as far as underwriting guidelines, there are guidelines when it comes to occupancy type. So if you're living in a primary dwelling and you do short-term rental, that would be insured as a primary homeowner's insurance with a short-term rental um, clause endorsement on it. If you have roommates, they wanna know how many roommates you have. Uh, traditionally, they like to see one single family in there, no more than two additional roomers. For a multifamily home, same kind of thing. If it's, uh, you traditionally, they'll, they'll allow you to sure insure on a just standard policy, whether it's a homeowner's policy, where if you're in a four unit complex, you live in one unit, you rent out the other three, or you rent out all four, they wanna see one family, no more than two roomers together. And then if you have a vacant home and it's vacant for any length of time, you need to have that transferred over to a vacant home policy because if it's vacant and they, you know, have, you have a catastrophic claim and they realize that it was vacant, you're no longer insured that same way. They could easily deny you a claim. Important things to look at when you're um, thinking about investment properties is what kind of lease length do you want to have? Are you looking for long term where you need to have a landlord policy in place? Are you doing short term for more than 181 days? There are a lot of um, time, rental time lengths and periods that qualify you for different types of insurance and endorsements. So it's really important to determine when you're making these decisions about purchasing the property, how you want to go about that, how you want to, to do the leasing. And there are programs within these companies that offer discounts for using um, tenant screenings and things like that. So if you did want to do a long-term lease, they can, they can help you with things like that. So like I said, they look at things like number of rumors, but then they also look at things like number of rentals. Most insurance carriers will offer coverage to people who have a certain number of rentals. Let's say with travelers, you cannot have more than nine rentals, whether or not they're insured with travelers, um, on a standard insurance policy. If you have more than that, you're needing to get a commercial policy. So it's important to keep a kind of a mind on where you're going as far as number of, of rentals, number of rumors, all those things, because you don't always fall into the same type of insurance policy. Some key under, underwriting keys as well include building requirements. They are looking at the age and type of roof. If you have a roof that's greater than 15 years old, you may be getting an actual cash value roof coverage. And what that means is they're paying you a depreciated value. If you have a 20 year expected life expectancy on your roof, they're seriously downgrading the payout that you're gonna get for a roof replacement or repair. Um, because they're accounting for things like wear and tear, age, depreciation, all of those things. Same applies for the furnace. With certain carriers, if your furnace is over 25 years old and it's a gas furnace, you're ineligible. So it's important when you're going through these purchasing processes to work with realtors who are able to get this information. A lot of times I work with realtors um, who just are, won't get it. I know that John is awesome because I just quoted one of his clients, sent over a whole list, age, type of roof, uh, malarkey class four shingle, which is hail proof, awesome, furnaces, or just replaced in 2017. It's important to work with professionals who are willing to work with the people who you're working with, like your insurance agent, in order to provide that information because without it, you may not be insured. Um, they're also looking at things like prior losses. 
And some carriers aren't just looking at your prior losses, but the prior losses of the property that you're purchasing. So it's important to be aware of those types of things. A lot of times you'll see that information come over in the seller's disclosures, but we also will let you know, hey, it looks like there was a claim in yada, yada, yada. Um, would you like to ask your realtor more about that stuff? And then um, you can receive discounts for tenant screenings, whether or not you offer rentals to smokers, credit checks, eviction screenings, um, safety components like fire extinguishers in the, the room uh, or in the kitchen and things like that. Um, bars on the windows, they want to know that they're, you know, unlock, they unlock from the interior and all those things. You can also receive a discount for working with property management companies. Um, it's important when you're considering investment properties and all of your insurance package to consider what type of auto insurance you're covering. Because when you have multiple properties, you have a much higher net worth. And so when you're carrying super low coverages on auto and things like that, the reality is you're much more likely to be involved in a claim where you're liable for somebody's bodily injury through an automobile than you would be through your homeowner's policy. So it's important to make sure you have excellent coverages on your bodily injury liability. Right now, it's really important to increase your property damage limits. It's very affordable. It's incredibly affordable. Why people carry state minimum for property damage is beyond me. There is no way in the state of Colorado you're hitting a vehicle or guardrail at, at, for $15,000. Just not going to happen. Um, it's important to consider your deductibles as you're purchasing your insurance because you want to be able to afford those things. Glass coverage is optional. Roadside assistance is optional. Rental coverage, make sure you have a, a significant amount there because if you have one vehicle and you're in, in an uh, incident where you're not able to um, have that vehicle, you need another vehicle. And $25 a day just doesn't get you anything. Underinsured and uninsured motorist coverage is very important to carry. That is the same thing for you that bodily injury liability provides for other people. So if you have multiple properties and you're not able to work, you're not able to receive the money that you would traditionally receive in order to pay for your mortgage, pay for your medical expenses, uh, pain and suffering, all of those things, lost wages, uninsured, under, under, uninsured and underinsured motorist coverage substitutes the, those um, liability limits that the other person may not have if they have state limits or not enough insurance. Um, there's also a thing called underinsured, uninsured motorist property damage coverage. And if you don't have full coverage on your vehicle comprehensive inclusion, you can always purchase that if you're hit by somebody who doesn't have any or enough insurance. An umbrella policy is a critical component of your insurance package. And what an umbrella policy does is it provides excess liability for your liability um, interest in your, in your properties and your auto as well. So it overlays all of your um, auto landlord policies, your any of your personal lines insurance. There are underwriting limits that apply. Traditionally on auto policy, you have to carry 250, 500, 100, which is 250, 250,000 per person, 500,000 per accident, 100,000 for property damage, and those are your liability limits. Then if you're, if you hit, let's say you hit a mechanic and heaven forbid, he loses a hand. Well, he's no longer a mechanic. So you're now responsible for the lost wages that he would otherwise be able to make if he had not been in an accident that you had caused and caused this injury. The reality is 250,000 per person is not going to cover that. So having an umbrella, an additional million dollars would come in and lay over that auto policy. Umbrella policies are sold in million dollar increments. And an umbrella policy is a type of liability insurance providing additional coverages beyond the limits of your primary policies like homeowners, landlord, auto, designed to protect you from major liability claims and lawsuits that could exceed the limits of your primary policies. Um, traditionally, umbrella policies are incredibly affordable Travelers, let's say, um, you can have a home, two autos, and uh, a motorcycle for $258 for a million dollars worth of coverage. And you get a discount on your auto and motorcycle and homeowner's policy. So when you break it down, you're paying like 100 and let's say 150. 
because you're getting all those additional discounts. It's really worth it to um, secure your assets that way. And then one other thing that's extremely important to think about is life insurance. And that's because when you're investing in multiple properties, you have a lot of people who are counting on you. But most importantly, your family is counting on you. And so if something were to happen to you, how would they then immediately go back to work? <laughs> for one. And then, you know, what about childcare? What about all of those expenses that your being here would have helped to cover? But not only that, how do people grieve um, once you lose somebody? You know, I, I personally have recently gone through this uh, two years ago in August. My dad was in a motorcycle accident and um, passed away. And my mom and me and my sister were all devastated. And my mom could not go back to work. She worked at a nursing home and everyone asked her, oh, uh, how are you? You know, it's like, she didn't want to talk about how she is. She could not go back to work and do the, do the work that she was doing. And so thank goodness my dad had a small life insurance policy, which allowed her the time to grieve and allowed her to continue to pay the bills that were coming in because those things just don't stop. So it's important to make sure you have a life insurance policy in place. And there are very affordable life insurance policies. Best to get them when you're young. I will say that. <laughs> but it's very important to have life insurance. Um, if you're grandparents, if, you have, if you're young now, um, it's a perfect opportunity to get them for your kids, for grandkids, things like that. So that when they are ready to purchase investment properties and those types of things, they already have a policy they can build on because they've already been rated at a young, healthy age. Um, some general insurance tips, shop it. I always am blown away by people who say, oh yeah, I've been with Schmarm for 40 years. <laughs> you gotta get out of there. <laughs> you gotta shop it because underwriting things change, policy, policy premiums increase. And when you don't have someplace else to look, they're not shopping for you and you're not doing it. You're just throwing your money away, honestly. Um, Increasing liability and property damage coverages is incredibly affordable. Always do this where you can. Um, the difference between insuring a homeowner's liability from $300,000 to $500,000 can be $5, 10 a year. So definitely do that. There are also a lot of programs that are available uh, that you could purchase like through my agency, for instance, and other insurance professionals like the Legal Shield program. Those are programs that are designed to help you with, you know, gathering a lease, um, questions that you have regarding eviction, all of those things. And those are really helpful resources for you to be able to um, proceed with these purchases and have support that you otherwise would feel very alone. Um, it's important, too, to look at the total package. When you bundle, you save quite a bit. It's, it's an excellent opportunity to um, save. And when you're having multiple multiple policies, multiple properties, those types of things, every little bit helps because you're not doing this to spend more money. You're doing this to get more money. So when you're paying less in insurance, definitely helpful. Um, the importance of insurance reviews is incredible. Anytime you're doing a renewal with your insurance, talk to your agent, let them know, hey, we remodeled our bathroom because that changes the replacement cost of your property. So it's very important that you're keeping your insurance person up to date of what's going on with your you know, financial world, what's going on with your properties, all of those things. We're here to help you, but if you don't tell us what's going on, we'll never have an idea. Um, we email and message people all the time and you would be blown away that for people who don't get back to that. <laughs> so that's always interesting. Um, does anyone have any questions? Let me get out of my screen share here. No questions? Oh, they're trying to, I can see. I can yeah, see. you might need to make sure that you unmute yourself. Um, I'll ask to unmute and you can. Yeah. Okay. Look. I have a question regarding, you were talking about shopping it. I actually had this question before you even brought it up. Yeah. And we, um, sometimes I feel like if you, is there, are you losing 
a lot of insurance uh, policies will give you a discount that you've been with them for so many years and so you get a renewal discount. How does that generally rate versus shopping your policy every year? Yeah, you know, that's a great question and it depends on the carrier. But if you're saving, you know, 1% by staying with them and renewing, but you're saving 20% by going to another carrier, it's not worth it to stay. So, I mean, even if you shop it and you don't make a change, at least you know you're still in the best policy and you still have the best premium. And, you know, obviously we would never pressure somebody to switch <laughs> for, for, you know, minimal savings or just to, to get a new client. You always want to work someone with someone who has your best interest in mind. And if they, you know, can't offer you something better, that's okay too. Sometimes you're best to stay where you're at really just depends on the amount of savings that you get. That's a great question. Yeah. Amber, Amber, do you, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. So do you have partnerships with people that do health insurance for a lot of entrepreneurs like us that uh, like, for instance, I'm in the process now thinking of leaving teaching and, you know, it's, it's just the marketplace is a disaster um, do you do health insurance or do you have people that, that you know and trust that do it? You know, I do have people that I know and trust. I work with two different um, partners really is one of them are independent insurance brokers. And so they can shop for a variety of health insurance packages for you. But then we also, Jenna and I also know an awesome guy, Billy Perskis, who works with U.S. Health. And the number of people who save by going to U.S. Health health versus the marketplace, because U.S. health is a non-marketplace thing. Um, it's incredible, these policies that, that Billy can get for people. So I would always recommend looking at two different packages. Yes, working with a broker who would be able to provide knowledge about the marketplace and, and all of those the nuances that are available, that, uh, available <laughs> that they put you through, I guess. And then also some a company that's not in the marketplace because there are big differences and there are a lot of savings to be had when you go out, out of the marketplace. If one of you could send me that information, that would be awesome. Yeah. Let me write that down. Yeah. So what do you think the long-term solution is for these carriers? Because I'm hearing the same thing in Colorado, Florida. I meet a lot of insurance agents. They're all saying the same thing. Um, obviously everyone needs insurance. So is the solution, is this everyone's going to pay more and it's going to be harder to get it? Is there any talk in your industry at the national level uh, with your lobbying group about solutions? I mean, what, what do you see happening here? Because this yeah. situation with, with climate change and disasters, it's only going to get worse mm -hmm. and insurance companies need to make money. So what do you think the long game is here? Yeah. You know, John, that's an awesome question, and I wish I had more information about it. All of these changes are coming on us so quickly. Like, I just got the words for Nationwide about these policy changes, la I think last week or the, uh, possibly the week before, but it's that all of this is just happening so quickly. Yes, I've heard, you know, things happening in California. State Farm won't write there anymore. So many carriers have pulled out of Florida, and now you can really only get state insurance there. It's really hard to say. And a lot of it's because there are so many factors that are coming into place. There was a report that came out today that stated a huge number of insurance fraud um, cases are what's really driving up these, these costs. People who are getting payouts for roofs and never getting them replaced. Um, people who are so desperate uh, just to survive right now that they're saying they got robbed and collecting all the money from their personal property, uh, theft coverage, things like that. Um, but then that coupled with extremely high payouts for liability. You know, we see these cases where you would just be disgusted and, and I get disgusted by it, but when you're the person who's injured, you know, they're probably really grateful, but at the, at the end of the day is, when you're in a car accident and those people, you know, are then sitting at home for two days with a seatbelt burn and they're seeing Fred Boy all over, oh, you could sue, you could sue. All of those things impact our, our you know, insurance premiums. Then coupled with the weather, I mean, when we're going to get a freaking break in the weather, <laughs> like, I, I just 
I don't know when we're getting a break in the weather. I can't take it anymore. So, all, you know, there are so many factors that these insurance companies are just trying to survive at this point. You know, they're paying out absurd amounts in liability, property damage, all of these things that, like I said, John, it's a great question. I wish I knew wish I could provide a better answer. I don't know what'll happen. I think people will continue to pay more. And that's one reason it's incredibly expensive to sh- or incredibly important to shop right now because not every carrier is going through the same thing. When you're looking at companies who are heavily saturated in certain areas, like you know State Farm being in uh, California, Progressive being in California, those companies will try to mitigate the payouts and the losses by pulling out of certain areas. So it's really just going to come down to how things go over the next couple of years. Nationwide pretty much said they're going to be doing this through 2024. At that point, they may let lessen the restrictions and continue to do business. But right now they have essentially made it impossible. And there's nothing that we can do about it. Pride and ownership. You know, encouraging when you're when you're looking at these properties, John, and showing your clients properties, looking at the roof, like making sure that your clients are getting in properties that have you know newer roofs. I mean, in Colorado, everybody pretty much has a newer roof, but there's just so many underwriting factors that are going into it right now. Okay, awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, Ever, what states do you ride in? You know, I write in a a variety of states, so I can write in pretty much any states, excluding California and Texas and Florida, (laughs) because those states have moratoriums right now um, for pretty much outside outside state writers. So you would probably benefit. Are you are you guys in Texas? Live you live in reality? Yeah. So um, if you don't work with an insurance broker right now, I would find one because they can certainly help you and help you navigate these changes and you know, navigate what carriers are pulling out, coming in, all of those different things, and kind of go that route. But traditionally, I can write in all of the states, except for those three, <laughs> which is where everyone really needs insurance. <laughs> yeah. It's been interesting in Texas for her. I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen. Um... Hopefully you guys can see this. This is our closing announcements that I'll let uh, John go over if no one else has any additional questions. Yes, thank you, Amber. I I was really uh, blown away by this. I learned a ton and somebody who owns multiple properties, who is constantly renting out to other people, who is working with buyers. This is very helpful information. I'm very excited that that it looks like you are gonna be the insurance agent for our mutual client. That's fantastic. Um, and yeah, thank you. That is, it's definitely not sexy, but super important from the coaching perspective. It's kind of like the nitty gritty fundamentals blocking and tackling. And without that, you can't win, right? So that's from the coach. Absolutely. So great job on Thanks, that. Uh, two weeks from now, uh, the Tuesday after the July 4th weekend, we will have your very own, or our very own, Genevieve Henderson from American Pacific Mortgage, who is going to talk to us about how do we profit in a high interest mortgage market. I am definitely going to be promoting the heck out of all of these every two weeks. This one is going to be fascinating. I have so many buyers that are sitting on the side run, sideline right now especially if they're looking for cash flow properties and saying, you know, right now with the high interest rates, it, there's just no margin. And then I have some new buyers that are just hesitant to get into the market, even though we all know that long-term building wealth through real estate, it's a, it's a long game and you got to get in to win. So Genevieve is going to talk to us about how do we still profit and build wealth with real estate using or in the high interest mortgage environment. So that being said, uh, any final questions? Well, thank you, Amber. Thank you, Genevieve. Thank you to our wonderful guests. And we will see you all in two weeks. Awesome. Thank you. It was so nice nice to meet you guys. I just love Jen.
<laughs> thank you. Thank you. We're proud of her. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you for the program today. I learned a lot. Oh, good. Well, if you ever have questions, even though I can't write in Texas, don't be shy to reach out to me. I'm happy to help you any way I can. I can see all the Texas underwriting guidelines. I just can't write policies there. Thank you. All righty. We're going to be signing off um, and stopping the recording. So uh, thank you all for coming and the great questions and the wonderful presenters. Thank you, guys. Take care. Bye.